All right. Hope everyone's enjoying camp. Um, like someone said, we've only got five minutes, so I thought I'd just tell a little story um, to start with. Um, this is Brother Bill from Fiji. Um, when I went over there, it was quite a while ago now, it's 2011. Um, I met Brother Bill at the rally, um, and he had just, he'd rolled into camp about 20 minutes after us, after us, and um, he looked pretty tired and and he said he hadn't eaten for a, a day or so. Um, and he got up on stage and he gave his testimony. Um, he is, like I said, he's from Fiji. He's from Rucky Rucky. Up, you can see at the top there. Um, and our rally at the time that year was in Suva. So it's down the, the bottom right. You can see it was just outside of Suva, 20 minutes away. And um, he got up to give his testimony um, the second day he was there. And... He just started talking and there was no, he wasn't, it wasn't like people were amazed or anything like that. It was just normal for them. But he'd walked to camp because he could, couldn't get a lift to camp. And like I said, so he lives in Rucky Rucky and that's about 100 kilometres away from Suva. And it's pure thick forest um, the whole way through. You can see Mount Victoria in the middle. That's the highest mountain in, in Fiji. It's 1,300 metres high. And it's just it's hilly and mountainous the whole way through. Um, now, you might think, oh, that must just be normal for them. But he got lost along the way and he'd been walking for about three days and he thought he wasn't going to make it to camp. And there was a time there where he thought he wasn't going to make it in general because uh, he had no food with him. He'd run out of food, he'd run out of water and he was basically just trying to live off the land, but it was getting pretty treacherous. It was, when we got there, it was torrential rain um, and they thought there was a hurricane forming. So um, he was in a bit of strife. And um, he said on the third... The third day, he uh, just prayed to the Lord and he said, look, it's get, it was night time, he was freezing cold. Um, all of our power at the rally had gone out because of this torrential hurricane had come through and, and he wasn't sure if he was going to survive the night, basically. And um, he just prayed and he said, Lord, whatever happens, happens. I just wanted to get to the rally. That's the reason I did this um, and I'm praying to you and whatever happens, happens sort of thing. And he said he walked about 200 metres just down this hill and he was at the rally and all the lights just turned back on, all of our power came back on. And um, it was a pretty amazing testimony um, and it was just amazing there you are, um, Amazing to hear. That, that was never, there was never a thought of I wasn't going to the rally. There was never a thought I wasn't, I wasn't going to go see my brothers and sisters and that was the only option. It was to be at the rally, otherwise whatever happens, happens. Um, that seems pretty radical to us. If we can't get to camp, we go, oh, well, we can't get to camp. That's just the way it is. But that's just the way they think. Um, and I guess you can see where I'm going with that. There we go. Ooh. Um, so that's me, with, that's me in 2011 with Brother Bill. He was our outreach partner as well um, uh, for, for the camp. But I guess what you can understand, the point I'm getting at is that, that no hesitation that that was always in his mind. That was the place I was going to be. Um, and he's an, he's an amazing man. I actually talked to him during the week just to ask him if it was okay if I could tell his testimony and use some photos. And his answer to me was just, he just said, oh, anything for the Lord. And that was just his answer. And I was just like, oh, they've they got an amazing, amazing, they're very basic about the way they think about the Lord. There's nothing else. They don't clutter it with anything. It's just the way they are. Um, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, that actually that happened. <laughs> this is this is brother Bill with his son now. He's got a wife and a child, so obviously he's a teacher at a school. Um, but um, I just thought I'd read a scripture out. Um, it says, "Well, oh, I can't really read that." And he said unto me, "My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, for the power of Christ may rest upon." Cut off the end there. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Um, I think in Western society, we can often think we can handle things. We have our minds across everything. We're like, oh, well, that's not a big deal. The Lord doesn't need to deal with that. But I guess the thing that I wanted to take out of this was that it says, take pleasure in our infirmities, you know. Pass them to the Lord. Be proud of them and go, you know what? I have got weaknesses. I have got issues that 
that may affect me in everyday life, no matter what it is. Um, but why not just look to the Lord for it? Even if it's as simple as, I want to get to camp, I'm going to get there. Camp is going to be the place I'm going to be. Rally, the rally is the place I'm going to be. The Lord is going to make sure I get there, no matter what. Um, and there's a real lack of pride in, in, a, in a good sense, in a, in a proud way, in an in arrogance way. There's, there's no arrogance with these people. They are very, uh, this is what where I want to be and this is the thing that I think is the Lord is the way to go and I've got, we think all these other things before that. There's 10 things that we think about before that, whether it, I can deal with that thing. The, um, I, I don't need to pray about that because my, my family have got that sorted or whatever, but there's a basicality about these people that is so amazing and the way they deal with everything is just through the Lord first. There's no hesitation. It's anything and I'm not just talking about outreaching, witnessing. It's just absolutely anything. Um, and I think that's just a, a really amazing thing. So I guess if we're going to take any points from this, it's take, take pleasure in our trials. Send them to the Lord. They're his trials now. Take pleasure and think, I'm going to learn something from that. There's something that can come from this. Um, and I guess the Fijians, I've got to note here, they're, they're so proud of the Lord. They're proud of the Lord and what he can contribute and what he can give to us. And that just is above all else. It's above anything um, that we can offer, I guess. And then lastly, I've got the basic rucky, rucky, no hesitation principle. <laughs> so that's one that I've kept in the back of my mind for a long time. No, I haven't, I haven't. It's a new one. But I guess I just want you to remember that and think whenever you're thinking about any issues you have, any, any, any trials you might have, put the Lord first. Let him deal with it, no matter what it is. I mean, even the smallest thing, he's, he's got it under control. And um, I'll leave it there.